Cognitive restructuring is used to treat many mental health conditions such as anxiety, depression, eating disorders, substance use disorders, and many personality disorders. It is at the heart of cognitive behavioral therapy. In this video, we'll understand what cognitive restructuring is, why is it helpful, and the various steps used in cognitive restructuring that will help you notice and change negative thinking patterns. So let's learn to rewire our brains. Hi everyone, my name is Aina, I'm a flight attendant and a cabin crew trainer. Apart from travel, other topics that excite me are leadership, health and wellness. Welcome to this channel. In the last video, we discussed what cognitive distortions are. They are exaggerated and irrational negative thinking patterns. Those distorted versions of reality that are interfering with our relationships, achievements, and even well-being. Some of the common cognitive distortions that we discussed in that video are all or nothing thinking, overgeneralization, mind reading, personalization, catastrophizing, should thinking, and emotional reasoning. Please have a look at that video to learn more about them. So how can we reframe those negative thinking traps? That's where cognitive restructuring comes into play. Cognitive restructuring is a group of therapeutic techniques that help people notice and change negative thinking patterns. Just like we train our bodies, Think of cognitive restructuring as a personal trainer of your thoughts. It's about deconstructing unhelpful thought patterns and replacing them with more balanced and accurate ones because ultimately they impact your emotions, your behavior and your well-being. So why is it so important to learn cognitive restructuring? I'm glad you asked. By tackling those distortions and cultivating healthier thinking patterns, you can reduce negative emotions such as anxiety and sadness, boost your self-esteem and confidence, improve your problem-solving skills and critical thinking, build on stronger relationships based on clearer communication and enhance your overall mental well-being. Cognitive restructuring techniques are extensively used by psychiatrists, psychologists and other mental health professionals. The good news is that you can practice these techniques on your own. So let's learn about the different stages of cognitive restructuring through an example so that you challenge those cognitive distortions of your own and reframe them. I'll be using a cognitive restructuring worksheet that I created and you'll find a link to that worksheet in the description box below. The first step is to identify the cognitive distortions by self-monitoring. Pay attention to the storyline, your thoughts and emotions and identify the distortion it's using. So imagine that some of my friends were going out on the weekend and I wasn't invited. I will write about it in the what happened section of the worksheet. Now it does not need to be a long story. Just a few sentences will be enough. The next question is, what are my thoughts about the situation or event? Hmm. So I think they don't like me. Uh, they think I'm boring. Um, I might end up spending the weekend by myself. Um, I might not have uh, too many friends in the long run. Those were some of the thoughts that were running in my head. Moving on to the third question. What are my feelings about the situation or event? 
So I feel um, sad, hurt, lonely, uh, disliked, stressed, and maybe rejected too. Okay, moving on to the last question in this section. Is there a cognitive distortion in my thinking? If yes, what is it? Now, after a bit of reflection, I concluded that I'm personalizing, that I'm assuming that I've been intentionally excluded by some of my friends. Interesting how our thinking can go down a rabbit hole, right? The great thing that happens when you reflect enough and put your thoughts and feelings on paper is that you distance yourself from them and then you can do something about those negative thinking patterns. You then want to question the thoughts and evidence. So how do we do that? I start by asking if there is really proof for my negative thoughts. Are they based on facts or are they distorted perceptions? It's like being your own detective searching for evidence that supports or contradicts your initial beliefs. Often our distorted thoughts lack evidence and by questioning them, we can begin to unravel its hold on a mindset. You can use different types of questioning techniques such as Socratic questioning technique, probing questions, funnel questioning technique, and a lot of different kinds out there. So I'm gonna pen down the evidence in favor of my assumptions first. In favor of my assumptions, I think I get moody and I think my emotions are right and I consider my emotions as facts sometimes. Now this could be emotional reasoning. When I was thinking about the evidence against my storyline, I realized that on multiple occasions, my friends have told me that I'm a fun person to be around, that I have a great sense of humor, that they want to hang out with me because uh, I'm an intelligent person and that they get to learn a lot from me. Now, another point that I realized later was that I pretty much didn't know anybody in that group. So probably they had a point. Great, I've now analyzed both pros and cons of my thinking. Now comes the fun part. Once you've challenged those distortions, replace those negative thoughts with more positive and realistic ones. This step involves consciously reframing your perspective. Focus on facts, logic, and a bit of positive self-talk. So when I was answering this question, how can I reframe these thoughts in a positive way? And what are the alternatives? I wrote down that my friends like me, some actually adore me, and they don't have to invite me to all parties and get togethers. I also realized that I didn't know most of them in that group, so it's logical for me to be not invited. Mind you, cognitive reframing is not non-stop positive self-talk like, oh, I'm amazing, I'm too good, but it's more about coming up with realistic options and looking for facts. This helps your mind to calm down and have a balanced view. How does this new perspective make me feel? Is it more accurate and helpful? That's when testing the reframed reasoning comes into play. Answering the last question, how do I feel after reframing my thoughts? I wrote down that I now feel less stressed and I have a realistic view of my situation. I feel peaceful too. Please understand that overcoming cognitive distortions is a gradual process and it takes time and effort. So please keep practicing. Remember you're not alone in this. We all have these distorted thoughts from time to time. You can always seek professional help if you think you need it. The key is to recognize them, 
challenge them and choose a more empowering perspective. By practicing these tips, you can break free from the negative thought traps and cultivate a more positive and resilient mindset. As we wrap up this vlog, I want to encourage you to share your own experiences in the comments below. Let's create a supportive community where we can learn from each other and grow together. On that note, till we meet again, Aina signing off and may you reframe those cognitive distortions, develop a more balanced and realistic perspective and build mental resilience.